class is now in session. I am Professor Hockey, and today we're discussing Game 5 of the regular season between the San Jose Sharks and the New York Islanders, in which the Sharks have lost 5-2. to two. And so we see a franchise record get broken. How exciting. The San Jose Sharks, for the first time ever, have managed to start a season with five straight losses. And this is the first time in franchise history that that has ever occurred. And franchise history doesn't just include, you know, from the lockout onward. This includes from when the Sharks first arrived in the league onwards, which includes the 92-93 season, which the Sharks lost 71 regulation games, or at least they lost 71 games. And even then, they didn't manage to lose the first five in a row in a season. And so the 22-23 San Jose Sharks get their names in the record books of being these absolute record breakers, and we shall see where they take us next. Another very interesting stat, if at least it's uh, kind of depressing more so, is that the San Jose Sharks, in these five games that they have played and lost, they've scored the first goal in four of them. The first goal scored is usually supposed to be a very, very big deal. Even the worst team in the league in this particular stat last year, which was the New Jersey Devils, managed to win about 42% of the games in which they scored the first goal. The San Jose Sharks themselves last year managed to win over 60% of the games in which they scored the first goal. And at this point now that the Sharks are 0-4, and that is a 0% winning percentage, it feels like almost like it's an inevitability that once the Sharks do score that first goal, that the other team is going to tie it. And in particular, they're going to tie it in the first period, in the second period. The Sharks' second periods have been abysmal thus far this year, which is kind of strange because the Sharks' first periods have actually been quite solid. They've been outscoring teams pretty handedly in the first period. So it seems as though the Sharks are coming out and are playing some decent hockey. But the moment any sort of adversity hits them or just the, you know, the next 20 minutes of the game hits them, they just completely fall apart. Last year, you know, there were a lot of struggles last year with the San Jose Sharks. They were still a bad team. They finished seventh last in the league. There's no, you know, if and or they finished eleventh last in the league. I should say there's no if ands or buts about it. The Sharks were not good, but at the very least, there was some fight in them that made the game somewhat interesting to watch. Remember that game against the Pittsburgh Penguins last season? The Sharks were behind six to one in the first period. They pulled their goaltender, put in Zach Sodchenko, who hadn't seen really any NHL time prior to that and yet the Sharks still managed to make it an extremely interesting and exciting game and while they would still end up losing it was something that was fun to watch this San Jose Sharks team would have fallen behind 1-0 to that Penguin squad and just completely rolled over and died and we would have never gotten that sort of comeback because there's just no longer any sort of fight here I don't know if that is a David Quinn issue I don't know if this is just the Sharks players being tired of losing at this point which is something they have done for each of the past three seasons seasons prior to this one but there just doesn't seem to be any energy at all in this group once the opposing team actually manages to score even just a single goal even if the Sharks are still holding the lead after that. You can just see just how deflated the San Jose Sharks get when the other team does score. I mean, I was watching when the empty netter went in here to make it 5-2 to two New York Islanders. You could just tell that the Sharks were just absolutely done, absolutely just checked out. And yes, technically, once that empty net goal was scored 5-2, the game was obviously over. But still, you want to see some bit more fight out of this team, and you're just not getting absolutely anything again I don't necessarily want the Sharks to win so many games because it is technically better for them to lose for them to tank for them to get a good pick but I do want some sort of exciting hockey from this squad and we are not getting anywhere near that and honestly I watched that the Sharks have now gone zero and five the same issues that have persisted from game one are still very apparent here in game five it seems pretty clear to me that the San Jose Sharks management at the very least doesn't seem to want to, this team to actually win any games I mean there's just I can no longer find any sort of excuses for why you would just keep this same roster of players and say hey just keep going out there and doing those same things instead of you know trying to go somewhere in the minor leagues to pick up 
Bortolo, Eklund, somebody to maybe give this team some sort of injection of life because there's just absolutely nothing doing. So this tells me that the team itself, the roster, they don't want to try and, you know, ruin, if you could say, Bortolo or Eklund's type of development. And they say, you know what, let's just feed this team to the Wolves at this point. And so this one started off, I'll go quickly through the goals scored here. The first one was from Nico Sturm, his second of the year, which now has the team lead in terms of goals, tied with his line mate Evgeny Svechnikov. But of course, before Svechnikov got that second goal, there was Anders Lee and Zach Parise to make it 2-1 Islanders. Svechnikov would tie it up, and then late in the second period, it would be Wallstrom taking the lead back for the Islanders, and that would be that for the game. The third period would come, Wallstrom would score another, Clutterbuck would add the empty netter and the Sharks would lose. So moving on to the lineups, uh, let's start off with the first line of Nico Sturm, Yona Gajovic, as well as Evgeny Svechnikov. Uh, clearly the Sharks best, wait, hang on. Oh, I just heard that that was actually the Sharks' fourth line for this game. It's kind of difficult to tell at this point because it's far and away the Sharks' only effective line at this point. And they have scored about half of the goals that the Sharks even have as a unit for this entire season, which is both a good thing and a bad thing. If you told me that this was the case last year, that the Sharks would have a fourth line with half of their goals doing you know, very, very well, I'd say, wow, this team really turned things around. But now... The fact that the fourth line is the best line for the San Jose Sharks does not really bode well for them moving forward. I've mentioned this multiple times already in the past couple of reviews. We saw actually when uh, Wallstrom scored his first goal of this game to take the lead for the Islanders 3-2 to near the end of the second period. The line that the San Jose Sharks responded to that with is sending out that fourth line. And last year, if I had seen Bob Booner respond to a goal against by sending out Lane Peters uh, Scott Reedy and Jeff VL or whatever, I would have been, you know, extremely upset at that lineup choice lineup choice and yet this time around the Sharks sending over their fourth line actually seemed sadly like the correct move because it was absolutely the only line that was going this game as well as the only line that seemingly has been going for the entire season thus far. I mean generally it is just a disappointment throughout. Barabanov returned to the lineup here today and the only thing I really noticed about him was his insanely long hair. Otherwise he didn't do much of anything. The lines were shaken up. Meyer and Hurdle were both separated here. Hurdle kept on the first line with Barabanov and Lorenz was joining them as well as Meyer dropped down to the Couture line joined by Luke Cunnin and yet nothing really happened you barely could tell that it's anything different from the previous game there's nothing doing the third line of Benino, LeBanc and Nieto also not doing all that much and like I mentioned it's really just the fourth line for the San Jose Sharks that's generating any sort of offense at all but even saying that while the Nico Sturm goal, I definitely liked the work done there. The Sveshnikov goal, his second of the season, is once again one that you probably can't rely on to actually be, you know, uh, a, a consistent basis. Another kind of lucky bounce type of situation for Sveshnikov. And so the fact that this team is relying on the fourth line getting some relatively fortunate goals to give it this group any sort of offense at all is awful 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 moving forward for them into even attempting to make games remotely competitive at this point when it comes to the defensive side of things it continues to just be an absolute mess the sharks are constantly hemmed into their own zone and while their defensive zone structure isn't terrible the fact is is that the sharks cannot move this puck north or south or whatever direction compared to where the sharks are actually on the rink they can't get this puck out of the zone in any sort of consistent manner so I could sit here and I could tell you about the improvements that I have seen to the game of a player like Mark Edward Vlasic who seems to have had a mini rejuvenation at this point certainly looks better than he has in the past couple of years but realistically that barely matters as the San Jose Sharks are getting nothing from their forwards they're getting very little help from the back end and even the goaltending here Reimer started off absolutely heroic as well but even he seemed to have given up near the end did uh, had the opportunity to save the both of the 
Wallstrom goals, if I'm not mistaken, but both of them end up just beating him. And so while he was absolutely massive and, you know, keeping the Sharks alive in the early parts of the second period, even though he did still give up two goals, by the end of the game, it wasn't that great of a game from Reimer. And so generally the Sharks, they look lost. They look off. They look like they're not even putting in the effort at this point. And so while the Sharks have broken the record by now being 0-5 and for the first time ever in franchise history to start a season with a game coming up tomorrow or not tomorrow but the in a couple of days against the New York Rangers who have looked pretty decent thus far this season it's hard to imagine when the Sharks will actually break out of this massive losing streak class dismissed